Crunching the numbers of everyday life with calculated factoids. Mount Everest is a very big mountain. Some say it's 29,031 feet tall, and others say it's 8,848 meters. But either way, most agree it's the tallest mountain on Earth. But I say we change that by making a bigger, better mountain. Why, you may ask? Well, for one, since it's the tallest mountain, people seem to want to climb it a lot. But climbing this thing is hard, really hard from what I've been told. Like harder than using a flaming torch, or juggling, or juggling flaming torches. Plus, it's not even in the United States, so I'm not even sure it really exists. Nonetheless, let's get started. Taking a look at what it takes to climb Mount Everest, we find it's logistically difficult to reach either of the base camps and even harder to summit it. And financially, it's an extremely expensive endeavor. Some have the total cost listed at over $100,000 for the expedition. These are things we can definitely address in our new tallest mountain that I'm calling Mount Factoid. For the location, I'm proposing we construct Mount Factoid in Colby, Kansas. Admittedly, I don't know much about the place, but it checks some necessary boxes for me. From an initial financial standpoint, Colby's cost of living index is roughly 20% below the US average. That'll come into play once we calculate the amount of land we'll need to build Mount Factoid. As far as getting to Colby, Kansas and ultimately Mount Factoid, the town is serviced by a small airport, but is also easily accessible via a few hour drive from either Denver, Colorado or Kansas City. Additionally, there's a Union Pacific Railway station that ends in Colby, all of which makes it far more accessible than any of the starting points for Mount Everest. The last box I need to check is Colby, Kansas sits at an elevation of just over 3,100 feet above sea level, which gives us a nice starting point for building Mount Factoid, which is exactly what we'll look at next. Let's consider what makes up a mountain in terms of shape and design one that's significantly easier to climb. Going into this, I considered a few options, but ultimately decided on modeling it after a pyramid. A little bit because mountains are actually shaped much like pyramids, and possibly more importantly, I found some nifty calculations, link in the description below, to help me later on in this video. But before we get to that, let's figure out the size of a pyramid with a height of 29,031 feet and having a slope of 51 degrees. Using a right triangle, we take the tangent of 51 degrees equals 29,031 over half of the base length. Multiplying by two gives us a base length of 47,019.3 feet. This means that Mount Factoid would have a base of roughly nine by nine miles. Accounting for parking, ticketing, gift shops, and other necessary support facilities, Mount Factoid's total land area will probably need to be about 100 square miles. That's 64,000 acres. Checking real estate listings for large parcels of land in Kansas, the going rate puts this size at a cost of $85.5 million. Pretty expensive, but for context, at New York City metro prices, it would be closer to $320 billion. Not that you would be able to find this size of land anywhere in New York City. However, it's a safe bet that it's possible in Kansas. Back to Mount Factoid. To find the volume of the mountain, we'd take one-third times the height times the base, which gives us 2.14 times 10 to the 13 cubic feet, or 145.35 cubic miles. For a bit of perspective, since we would want to build this out of a sturdy rock, this amount of material would require taking nearly a quarter of an inch from the entire granite state of New Hampshire. As for cost, this much granite would be about $23.7 trillion, and that's just the price of materials, never mind needing to transport it and actually build the mountain. Breaking down the cost of construction is possibly a topic for another video. Let me know in the comments if you would be interested in seeing that. Moving right along, as I said before, part of why I wanted to build a new tallest mountain is to improve on the ability to climb it. And here's where those nifty calculations come into play. Assuming aliens didn't build the Great Pyramids of Giza, Another theory speculates ramps were used in the construction that hugged around the outside perimeter of the pyramid. For the purposes of Mount Factoid, it's irrelevant that aliens didn't use ramps when they built the pyramids, but what is relevant is the calculations used to figure out the ramp dimensions surrounding a pyramid. Using the following set of graphics and equations, we can find out just that. Plugging in what we know so far, we have almost all of the parameters. 
We just need to decide on the ramp's incline. The most logical place to look for guidance here is the American Disabilities Act, or ADA, which sets the maximum incline of just over four and a half degrees for a wheelchair ramp. So that's what we'll use for our ramp. Back to the calculations, we find that our first ramp will rise 3,478.79 feet above the base. Now that we know the height, we can solve for the hypotenuse of the triangle, and this gives us a ramp distance of 44,338.91 feet, which is just over nine miles. Continuing to the next side, we'll build another ramp. But before we can do that, we know that our new base length will be smaller. To figure out by how much, we need to solve this distance of the triangle, multiply that number by two, and subtract it from the first base. Then we can perform the same calculations as before with our new base. Solving for all of this gives us 41,385.16 feet as the second base, and 39,025.95 feet for the second ramp. Repeating this process, by the time we make a full circle around the pyramid and back to the first face, which is the fifth ramp, the length will have already been nearly cut in half at a length of 26,610 feet, or 4.7 miles. And by the sixth round trip, the ramp length will be under a mile at only 3,452 feet. Once we complete the 50th and final ramp, we'll come to an 80 foot by 80 foot or 6,400 square foot summit which is plenty of room to take selfies. At this point, we've now reached a height of 28,982.88 feet. Accounting for Colby's base elevation of just over 3,000 feet, this brings the total elevation to over 32,000 feet above sea level. Thus, we've accomplished creating the new highest point on Earth. Now, let's see how fast we can get up this thing. In true calculated factoids fashion, we'll extrapolate other distances and times and apply them to our 70.79 miles of ramps up Mount Factoid. For running, applying a world record marathon pace to get up the mountain in five and a half hours is not realistic because of inclines and elevation. So in an effort to be more realistic, there's a hundred mile race in Silverton, Colorado, and wouldn't you know it, it has runners climb 33,000 feet during the course at an average of 11,000 feet. While this is not exactly the same, it's close enough. Using this race's top finish pace would have somebody summoning Mount Factoid in a mere 16 hours. Turning to motorized vehicles, the series of left turns up this mountain seems ideal for a NASCAR driver to zip up the mountain at 200 miles an hour or 21 minutes. But like the marathoner, it doesn't seem quite realistic enough not that any of this has really been all that realistic since I've ignored quite a bit of details in the construction of the mountain, the potential weather, air density for the runner, and I'm sure a bunch of other stuff too. But let's keep moving forward. My more realistic example for a car comes from Travis Pastrana's 5 minute 44 second 7.6 mile climb of Mount Washington in a highly modified Subaru WRX. At this rate of speed, Mount Factoid could be driven up in 54 minutes. And I would imagine even at that speed, it would be a white knuckle drive all the way up. That about does it for today. What did you think of Mount Factoid? Would you want to come visit it, climb it, drive up? Let me know in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, I encourage you to give it a like, check out my other calculated factoids, and consider subscribing to stay up to date when I post new videos. Thanks for watching.